Odin Tufta was appreciative and thankful for the man who was his head coach for all four years in Hamden. It's not down to Carson Wentz, it's down to Howie Roseman in the Eagles front office where he goes and the compensation for Wentz will be a late first plus. Suggs the block, <laughs> Suggs the dribble, Suggs the dash, Suggs the needle threader to Drew Timmy. Buddy Bayheim is son, he could drop 25 on your head when you're not expecting it. And Deegan is sneaking, Deegan is deacon right there and she is keeping the ball low to bounce it up and she scores. What do the Mets have to do specifically this year to take advantage of, of this contention window? Last time they were here, they made the Final Four. Are they as good as that Final Four team with DeAndre Hunter and some NBA talent? They are not, but Mac McClum, a dynamic, explosive player. He is even more efficient than he was when he was at Georgetown. You still have the, the reassurance and players are still getting their honors, but you're not bringing anyone into a dangerous situation. Right they score! A garbage goal in overtime ended the career of one of Quinnipiac's most creative players ever on Saturday night. You know, credit to uh, Mankato, they, uh, they didn't quit. Captain Odin Tufto didn't just break the assist record for Quinnipiac all time this season, he cemented himself as a Bobcats legend by finishing just one point shy of the Division I program points record. His last game might have left him in tears off the ice, but Odin Tufta was appreciative and thankful for the man who was his head coach for all four years in Hamden. Uh, I don't know where I'd be today as a hockey player if it, if it wasn't for Rand and that coaching staff and the opportunity they'd given me these last four years. It's been fun to watch him develop from his freshman year where he was just all offense, and I got on him and got on him, got him, trying to get him to defend and work on his face-offs. Tufto's eye for a pass. <laughs> and goal scoring ability will make him attractive to potential NHL teams, but the undersized playmaker will never forget where he stood out above the crowd. I'm, I'm truly grateful for a coach like Rand Pecknold. Uh, he's given me the world these last four years. Pecknold will be back behind the bench next season, but without one of his best ever players, who will be in a new city playing pro hockey, making just as many fans as he did in Hamden. Reporting from Quinnipiac University, Jonathan Banks, QNN Sports. Welcome back to QNN Sports. Jonathan Banks with you, and we've got a special guest here. SNY correspondent Jacob Resnick is joining us to talk some Mets, talk some NL East baseball. And Jacob, we're going to jump right into it. You don't just specialize in the farm system. You specialize in the entire organization. But you recently put out a piece for SNY talking about the Mets farm system and some of their top prospects. So to you, which of their top prospects is going to make the jump and have the biggest impact on the big league team this year? The guy I have my eye on is uh, Matthew Allen. Um, he's just going to be 20 in April and he is, uh, you know, already putting himself in, in the conversation for one of the top 100 prospects in, uh, all of baseball this year before the contract extensions come into play, cause there's a possibility one or both of those guys won't be playing baseball in New York. So what do the Mets have to do specifically this year to take advantage of, of this contention window, which starts this year could branch three to five years, depending on how much, how much and how many years they sign those guys. But this specific year, the Mets are in a good position based on those contracts. Yeah. I mean, as, as long as they stay healthy, which has been a, uh, a struggle uh, for many Mets teams of, of the past where, you know, they look really good on paper. And then all of a sudden, just like that, um, a couple of big pieces go down. The window is here, but it's closing quickly. The New York Mets are going to win their first division title since 2015, according to SNY correspondent Jacob Resnick. Jacob, thanks for the time. And coming up, MVP candidate is Bryce Harper, one of them. We'll get that and more coming up on QNN Sports. We're going to start in San Antonio where it's also beautiful. Final four, number one UConn comes in as the favorite against number three Arizona. And this was a good one, Tom. UConn are looking to get back to their first national title game. Since 2015-16 when they won the tournament, went 38-0. Late first quarter, Arizona up three. Cat Reese and the foul gets it to go. Reese would go back again. Second quarter, Arizona up late. Cat Reese, layup, gets a piece of that in. Reese's pieces. Tom, do you like Reese's pieces? I love Reese's pieces. Arizona up nine, Ari McDonald the three, Arizona up 12, but UConn would fight back. Paige Beckers, that is pure from the best player in women's college basketball. UConn down 11, she would fight back in the third quarter. UConn now down 14, Beckers, Kristen Williams, corner pocket three, that is good. Later on though, Arizona up eight, Ari McDonald just saw her sitting there, 
Gonna drive on Beckers. Happy Meals for all as she gets that to go. And now Tom, this is the pick on Paige Beckers portion of the highlight. Arizona up 10 over Beckers again. You're gonna see this move drive inside and that is good Trinity Baptiste. Knock her down and score. Arizona up 53 to 46. Ari McDonald, she was a beast this tournament. Tom gets it to go. Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year did it on the offensive end. Arizona up 10, and they'll dribble out the clock here. Arizona 69 to 59 winners in this one, and they are headed to the national championship game. That's McDonald's, but not the dollar menu. Senior Jacob Bergoni led the way with 18 points and cleaned the glass with a career high 15 boards, while Taimu Shinri and Lewis Courtright helped the cause with 18 points of their own. An impressive performance in Quinnipiac. Could they sweep Ryder out of Hamden in game two on Sunday? We pick it up 11 minutes left in the first half. Bobcats up four, Lewis Courtright. That is pure. Bobcats up seven. A little later, Taimu Shinnery slashing, dashing, thrashing to the cup, gets it and the foul. Bobcats up seven. Second half now, Bobcats up 21. This is some prime San Antonio Spurs ball movement. Was that Manu Ginobili or is that Jacob Ragoni to hit that three ball? Bobcats up 24 and a minute later in transition, Shinnery the steal, Seth Pinkney run the floor, big fella, gets it down for the dunk. A dominant finish from Pinkney, a dominant win for Quinnipiac as they take this one 93 to 68. Quinnipiac returns home to Connecticut for the final series of their regular season, March 4th and 5th against St. Peter's. That's all the time we have tonight. Thanks for spending your evening with us. We'll see everyone next week. Your local news is next.